Hello and welcome to Love Rugby League Weekly. My name's Dave Parkinson. My name will probably appear somewhere here or somewhere there. And this is Mr. Drew Dabbs, whose name will appear probably about here now. Or up here. <laughs> or, I don't know, where else can I put it? Anyway, Drew, great to have you alongside me again. It's great to be back, Dave. I always like doing these videos. This is like our first post-season video, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is a bit, isn't it? It's, it's quite a strange one, to be fair. It's the grand finals out of the way, the league one's out of the way, championships out of the way, it's, but we're on to the international game. Even now. though I thought we were never going to get them out of the way, to be honest, because we seem to keep having playoff finals, didn't we? Well, yeah, it was playoff final after playoff final, league one, promotion final, promotion relegation final, I, got, I lost count, Dave, but... Let's face it, there were a shield for everyone. So, uh, and there's a shield that's been introduced or reintroduced for the international series yeah, as well, hasn't there? The Was Baskerville it? Shield for for the England New Zealand game. I think I, I hope I've pronounced it right. I, I it? think you have, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, yeah, so it's uh, it's an exciting autumn ahead, Dave. I, I always like uh, I, I always like international football, no matter if it's a World Cup or a European Championship. I always like watching international. Before we do get on to the whole international, there is one domestic league that is still ongoing. So at the time that I'm going to be editing this, and the time that it's going to be going out, the um, the top four final in Cumbria is still to take place. Now, they've been going, there's only six teams in this top division, by the way, they've been going for what seems like forever. They started off first week in March, I think. And it's getting, it's getting, you, you were telling this tale before, Dave, but uh, so there's, there's six teams in the top division in Cumbria for the people who don't, mm -hmm. who, who don't know at all. And then in the second division in Cumbria... I think I heard there was 14 teams. So that, <laughs> how does that even work? Can there not be eight, eight and eight? I don't or could know. they not be 10 and 10, sorry? I don't know, I don't know. I think... See, we're, we're talking league structures again. We can't, we can't get away from talking <laughs> league structures. So I just thought I'd bring that little debating point to the uh, to the uh, to the table. But uh, congratulations to both those teams that have made the final and made the best team win. Um, right, with that out of the way, let's go crash straight into the internationals. Uh, you was over at Lee, you was, saw the build up to this, um, you were speaking to the, the movers and shakers of the England squad and the England uh, team beforehand, um, what was said ahead of the international at Lee? Uh, well, it, 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 let's face it, it was just a warm up game, the, the England-France game at Lee, I know that a lot of people have gone on, gone on about the attendance there, but uh, I think there's a lot of reasons behind it. Um, I don't think it was a particularly bad attendance no, though, I mean, you look uh, at it, it's the, it's the second largest attendance that's been at the Lee Sports Village all season. I think if it was on a weekend, I think it, it, it you could have easily got 10,000. Well, uh, I would have said seven and a half plus. Well, I, I, I think if it were marketed right, because let's face it, it wasn't, it wasn't marketed until after the grand final, so they only had, really had seven, Ten days to to market. Uh, not even that. It, it, um, how, how many days? About five days to market it. There were people who were throwing because, accusations that they hadn't even heard this international was on. Now, because obviously, obviously the RFL were, and obviously that's the job to, uh, and the marketing the grand final, Super League's marketing the grand final. Um, so they they were busy marketing the grand final, trying to promote it, but then obviously England and France were playing five days later. But what I do want to throw at you here is the fact that it's been in the calendar for a good three or four months. Oh, this does, was yeah. announced back in, yeah. I think it was back in June, wasn't it, or first week in July that it was announced. Yeah, and, so uh, but, it's not but, like but, nobody but, but, knew about it. But to be, to be fair, the ticket, ticket details weren't uh, straightforward as well. Like, um, my my dad were, were trying to go as as a fan, just watching as a specky, and uh, it was uh, it was like, can you pay on the gate? I don't know. Can you pay on the gate? He, he doesn't. He knows how to use computers, but he doesn't know how to use them uh, to a, a certain extent, shall we say? And and he was like, well, I can't find if if we can pay on the gate or not because it obviously it was a last minute thing. But um, uh, they did put did. details out that you could yeah. pay on the gate, but I think yeah. it only came out on the day or maybe so it the might day have, before. So it might have been on the day or the day before, and then my dad obviously didn't pursue it. So. Um, but having said that, I mean, these things, I think, were announced think, think, via Twitter and stuff like that. Well, exactly. So, like, he's not on social media, so you can't just preach to one audience. I think you've got to preach to them all. But, um, yeah, I was lucky, lucky I, enough I, to I, be one of the 5,000 to, to watch it. Dominant, dominant display in that first half from Wayne Bennett's side. I think it was seven tries scored in the first half. It was 38-0, uh, wasn't it? At yeah, that time? yeah, it was very, very dominant. But I think you could tell with the way that... Um, 
I think it was Tom Burgess. I think I've got I've got the right to win though that that he went over. 90 seconds into the game yeah, and, yeah, and, you, and, you, and you just had that feeling then that it was going to be a, a, a bit of a whitewash game um, I've said elsewhere on another podcast you'll be able to find on the Love Rugby League website just getting it in there um, that really the Burgess brothers this autumn they're going to be like the Bruise brothers, aren't they? Not yeah. the Blues brothers. They're going to be causing bruises to those at international level. Because I tell you what, they've turned into two hefty specimens, haven't they? Yeah, I was at, I was at the Imperial War Museum last Monday when they when they unveiled the the new poppy shirt, and uh, I spoke to them both. And, you know, and I'm six foot five, by the way. And uh, so there's not. He's many, been sat in a grow bag. There's, uh, there's not there's not many people who who I I feel small to. But when I was I was next to the to them Burgess boys, wow, they are huge. It's like when they had the kit on as well, and obviously the, the tops tight fitting. It was like, oh my word, <laughs> what, what what on earth did these get fed to to be this size? I think I read they were 130 kilos. Wow. Um, so and that weighs I think it's around 20 21 stone. Uh, and it obviously but the pure it's, muscle it's, 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 yeah, it's not going to be 21 stone of fat it's going to be 21 stone like, of uh, not like this <laughs> it's going to be uh, tw- yeah, 20 stone of uh, pure muscle and uh, yeah it, it's great to see that George is back in the side I think George is slightly the bigger one this year um, seems to have put a lot of size on it and uh, he, he performed well against France he, it, they just make at least ten meters with each carry, and, and that's what you want. And yeah, I think they'll be they'll be massive against the Kiwis. I think well, literally part of the pub. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think there was a number of good performances though. I mean, uh, Richie Myler comes in for his first international in what was it six years and sort of dominated the middle really didn't he? Did everything that was expected of him, and you know, fair play to him because he's been with a. A really inconsistent lead side this year, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Fair play to him. He's, 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 yeah. To be fair, he's took a lot of stick this year, as Richie Meyer, as you say. Mm-hmm. Leeds haven't been the best, um, the best team this year by, by a long shot. They, they was all right in the qualifiers, but apart from that, wow, they've, they've been abysmal. Richie Meyer has probably probably done a, a decent job though with what he can this year. He's, he's not been playing behind a dominant pack. We all know it's it's pretty simple that if you play behind a, a dominant pack and you're in half back, then uh, more, more than likely you, you're going to perform. Uh, we, we've seen that with Josh Drinkwater at uh, Catalans this year. Uh, yeah, yeah, fair, fair play to Richie Mala. I, I, I struggle to, to see him playing against the Kiwis. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I don't, I don't think he'll, he'll play this autumn against the Kiwis in any of the, the three games um, because there's other options and then you get the Wigan and Warrington boys coming in from the grand final um, I don't think there'll be a place for him and Jake Connor though as well his half-back partner against Jake France. was brilliant actually he was fantastic yeah. um, he did everything right he, he, but what I like most about Jake Connor is when he runs with the ball and he, and he takes on the on the defence he, he turned the, the, the France defence apart at times what I really like about him is his versatility as well because mm. I mean he can play right across the back line we've seen him play a bit at full back he's been on the wing he's played centre he's been both half backs yeah. um, and I actually think that with a bit more development the half back role is about right for him oh I know I, I, I see his future being as a, as a half back to be fair Dave I, d- I don't think he's quite Got the size to be an international centre, um, so I think he's his perfect uh, position is in the halves. And, and let's face it, he's, the, one of the best traits about him is his creativity. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's what a halfback's job is, is to do. I think I think I don't want to be disrespectful towards centres, but I think he's kind of wasted at centre because he offers so much creativity. He needs to be in the centre of the field. I think. I, I think he's the sort of guy that. You need to give him the ball fifty times a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Whereas in the centre, he probably get it what it about can, ten or fifteen, yeah, maybe it, twenty it, times a game. Yeah, he can always come up with something, um, and that's what I, that's what I like about him as well. Uh, he's, he's decent in defence. He's okay, um, but obviously his attacks un- unbelievable. Uh, he's, he's come on so much in this this last eighteen months or so. Well, to be fair, while he's been at Hull, mm-hmm. he's, he's been fantastic. Uh, it, it, <laughs> It was uh, quite surprising when he was at Huddersfield that he was only played on the wing, but um, 
Yeah, he's a, a phenomenal player, and Wayne Bennett certainly thought so after the game as well. He, he uh, lauded him after the game. He was re really speaking highly of him. So uh, I think Connor could well play against New Zealand. Now Wayne has had his criticisms, hasn't he, mm. with regards to how he's been with the press and the type of yeah. uh, comments that he's made uh, during his time as as England boss. Uh, did you find him quite willing to talk about the game and about the international series coming up after? That, that international league. You know, to be fair, yeah, he, he, he spoke quite a bit. To be fair, I don't. After after the France game, I don't think uh, anyone wanted to be there too long. I'm not. I'm not going to lie, but um, I, he, 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 what's wrong with being he, in Lee on a Wednesday night? He, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he, he didn't. He didn't just give like one word answers. Yeah. Um, like we've probably seen in the past at the World Cup, he, he seemed quite engaging. He, yeah. he answered questions uh, fully with a couple of sentences. He spoke quite enthusiastically. Um, I asked him about the, the French uh, mid season test. Well, New Zealand, we know the Denver test isn't happening ne next season, mid season. Mm -hmm. um, but the Kiwis have, are playing Tonga. Uh, That's going to be exciting, isn't it? Yeah, in 2019 mid-season. So obviously, we won't be England won't be able to play the Kiwis or Tonga. Then uh, it's looking like the Kangaroos. Uh, well, the Australia Kangaroos are, are they wanting to, to play somebody? Uh, well, I don't, yeah, you, you, you've got to think because they they've got a charge that they they pay their players twenty thousand um, per test. I'll play and, for him. But the, if you know, I, I only need one cap. If, if you notice with the um, the Tonga test, what they've just played, uh, they have to take a pay cut. So do Australia want to keep playing internationals and paying the players? I, I don't think they they want to keep playing the pay keep paying the players twenty thousand pound a test match. I, I don't. I think they need to to bring it down a notch. I think England and New Zealand get roughly five thousand. And, and that's a, a big, big drop from from the Australians. So I think the NRL and the Australian board want to notch it down a bit. But, but whether the the players are willing to do it, who knows? Um, but yeah, um, and when Bennett said that the 2019 mid-season test is a possibility of playing France. Is that the strong enough opposition that we need, though? Because it, it seems every time we, co we come up against France, we just beat them quite convincingly. Don't really learn a lot. I mean, the second half, we might as well have just declared at half time and gone home. Well, what I found a little bit baffling was Tony Gijo didn't play fullback, he played in the centre. Mm. Um, they played Stan Robin at fullback. Who's a halfback? Who's a halfback? Yeah. Um, and they play Will Barto in 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 the halves. Um, he's a good player, but, though. Oh, he, he, he is. But I think Lance Todd winner should not be playing out of position. He, he, we all know his best position is fullback, um, uh, especially especially for France. To like, be he, fair, could you also equate him to sort of like a Jake Connery? He's like the Jake Connery kind of, of kind the French of, game, and the fact of. that he can play anywhere usually gives a good effort. I just don't think his heart was in it. On Wednesday, I've got to be honest. Sort of looking at him, it didn't look like he was fully on his game. Mm. Well, well, that, that could be doing with him playing out of position. I, I don't know. Sam Robin will play out of his position, but obviously, when it, the the Wigan, the two Wigan boys weren't playing, and Roman remained never at. He'd have a, he'd had a bit of size in the middle, um, and obviously Morgan Esker, who's another he, fullback. He'd had some pace, uh, though, but he can play on but, the wing as well. But, can't yeah, but he, he would have added a lot of zip. Uh, mm -hmm. To France, and it, and it was clear that he was missing the, the main man in uh, Remy Casti, who's unfortunately retired along with Vincent Dupont. Um, and it's, it's quite sad to see there's a few French players who have, who, have, who have pulled out of the internationals this autumn because they want to rest or they want to. Prepare for next season. Um, you can't blame them though, right. can you? Because you ultimately, ultimately, the club game is where they earn their dosh. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much the the, the France players get played. But for England, if you play for England, it should should be coming over your, over your club because oh, I do, they get I, five thousand. I do agree with that. You know, I agree with the sentiment, but I can also see it from the other side because you know. Ultimately, without wanting to promote another sport, but we're not a rugby union where the international game is the pinnacle. Maybe it should be. Yeah, but it, need, yeah, it needs to and be. And it needs and, to and be. The only, yeah, way, yeah. the only way that we're going to get it is by having the best players on show. Mark Carella, Championship Player of the Year. He would have added a lot, a lot to, to the French team, another, another fullback. Um, but he would have added a lot, and he's not a player because obviously he said it's been a long season for him. 
got to respect his decision, but it's uh, I don't know. I think I think it's a little bit strange that one because uh, international for me anyway would always come come first. Um, one thing we haven't mentioned about this international, we had uh, quite a number of debutants mm. uh, and a couple of other guys that really impressed me on debut were Adam Milner. I thought he really got stuck in, and uh, Robbie Mulhern. Um, I. I I think I said on, on one of these or elsewhere that I've not really seen a lot of Mulhern this season over at Old Kingston Rovers, so I wasn't sure what I was expecting to see. But I was really impressed with him. Oh no, he's been fantastic for Old Car. I, I've watched Old Car a, a few times this season, and he's impressed every time. He's, he, he just carries the ball mm-hmm. uh, very, very strong. But he's got he's got some pace as well. He has got some. I, I remember him scoring quite yeah. a long range try or a it, chase back. Or field. Oh, that game was boring. Oh. <laughs> I've, I've brought back bad memories. Uh, I, think, I think Rovers <laughs> put about, th- I think it might have been about 38 6 at John Smith's. Yeah. yeah. They're on to about 2000. Um, in March or summer. <laughs> it was a, it was a dull night anyway, and it was absolutely bucketing it down. Um, but yeah, he's, he's been fantastic. He's made he's made Love Rubber League's Team of the Week a few times this season. Um, he, he just impressed every time, and, and Wayne Bennett picked him out for praise after the game. Yeah, I'm just thinking if you can hear some background noise behind us, I'm not sure what the heck's going on in this building. I'm half expecting a drill bit to come through the, the wall at some point. Might be a meteor. You reckon? <laughs> you reckon? Uh, uh, well, we're in a meeting room. Hey. Hey. No, no, right, hey. right, okay. Enough of my bad jokes. But yeah, just just going back on the on the debutant, Jamie Shaw impressed at full back. He um, did. It's a shame he's not available now, isn't it? Yeah, he's, 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 well, he he's pulled out of the Knights, didn't he? Did he pull out of the no, Knights? No, no, he's, he's going he with the Knights. Yeah, yeah, he's got he's going with the Knights. Um, so uh, yeah, for good luck to him. None, none, of the, none of the Knights players are staying with the England senior side. I think that's what you might have got mixed up with there, Dave. But yeah, he's got he's got. I think he's. I'm sure he's gone with the Knights, hasn't he? You see, I, I thought I thought he pulled but, out, but, but, but if, if he hasn't, good luck, James. But, but to be fair, the, the night teams come back, and then now levels is starting at fullback. So I don't, you've got me mixed up, there, Dev. Yeah, I, I think he's pulled out with injury or whatever. All right, okay. he's pulled out with whatever. Maybe he's wanting to have that uh, beast of a, an off season with whole like they were threatening that they were going to get. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, another one of the debutants, Ollie Holmes. Ollie I thought Holmes. he was excellent. Yeah, he, he, he runs very good lines, doesn't he? Um, he's a very he's, similar player to, um, to 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 a couple of the other second rowers that we've also got in the fact that he's really good with his line running. Mm. His defence is tip top. Um, he, he also just involves himself yeah. in the way that some other second rowers in the comp do. Yeah, uh, he's very gritty as well. He's, he's just very gritty and very determined. He's got that, like that rugged character. He's got like that that, that John Bateman kind of mentality where he just goes at it and he's just like he's like he's like a little terrier, isn't he? he yeah, he, he, is. Just, yeah. he just gets stuck in and, and keeps on going. So yeah, the, some really really promising signs. And uh, Tommy Johnston. Anybody would think that he'd been playing international rugby for years, pops up, scores a hat trick within 25 minutes. What a debut. Yeah, hat trick hero. Um, I, I don't think he could have dreamt that it would go any, any better than that. He played alongside his Wakefield teammates as well, Reese Lynn. Um, he was solid. Very solid, yeah, solid option. I don't think he'll be getting in um, against the Kiwis, though, I might have, because I think they'll, they'll probably go with. Bateman in the centre. Mark yeah. Percival. No, I don't. I don't think he'll go with Bateman. I think he might go with Gildart. All oh, right, okay. I think, okay. I, think he, I think he might go with Gildart and Percival. Um, but yeah, solid debut. And uh, Tom Johnson, he didn't have to do a lot for some of his tries, but uh, he finished doing well and he got a hat trick. So uh, yeah, the, the, there's plenty more more games to come from him in an England shirt. Um, reflecting on the England squad as it stands at the moment, do you think it's well balanced now? Having seen what you saw at the uh, earlier in the week. What, what do you mean by balance? Just I'm just thinking balance across the board. Yeah, yeah, just sort of balance. Yeah, yeah. The, players, I, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, guys yeah. to come back in. You like see your Tompkins and what have you. Well, like yeah, the guys I, from Wigan and Warrington. Yeah, I, I spoke to recently after the game, and, it, and one thing he he picked out was that there's so much strength in depth in this England team, and and, it, and it's true to be fair. If you look at fullback, we've got a couple of great great options. Wing, we have all in the pack. We're, 
th something that England have, have had for a number of years now is a very very good pack um, and I think that's that kind of be an intimidating thing for other teams is, is our pack because I think yeah. that's that's our strongest point um, you, you know it's, it's with credit that you mentioned the pack and we have had a, a world class pack for a number of seasons it's been the back line which has undone us hasn't it uh, because of pl players at certain yeah. points not being available and what have you and maybe at times picking players that uh, have previously played well uh, going off reputation rather than performance do you think we've got more of a performance based squad this year? I think, I th I think we have um, I still think I don't know. It's a solid team on paper, but when you when you compare it to the likes of the Kiwis and the Australians, um, I think they could still get on top of us a little bit in in that back line. Um, but we are getting better. Like if you compare our back line to a to a maybe twenty twenty ten, for example, then uh, our back line is getting very much better. Um, Had Keith Senior retired then? <laughs> oh, was he still getting picked at the time? <laughs> Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> you might, when did he retire, Keith? Um, no, come and tell us, Keith. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Callum Watkins will be a big miss. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no doubt about that, as he's been a big miss for, for Leeds this season. But yeah, I th I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident. Tommy Makinson, I, th I think, will get the nod over Tom Johnston. Uh, he's, he's been phenomenal this year. I think Wayne Bennett said as much, didn't he? Yeah. Um, Tommy Makinson's just got that, that bit extra at the moment. I think he's got that right hand friend of Tommy Makins is sensational. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, think, I think they'll go all right. Okay. Matt Percival will get the nod, I think, this year. He'll get his chance. What do you make of the Kiwis? Uh, you know, because, I mean, again, they've got some big specimens. Adam Blair, for example, uh, Topo. Mm. Um, you know, all the lads who've but signed new contracts with their NRL clubs, Tapin and Ortiz has just signed a new deal with Canberra. Uh, I, th I think one of the, the key battles, and, it, and everyone said it, it's no secret it will be in the forward pack. I think where the where the games won and lost. Obviously, they've got they've got flurry players like Sean Johnson. Johnson they've got uh, flurry players as well with lots of her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dali Martini, Zelezniak at fullback, really good play. He's one for the future, definitely. He's very young still. Um, but the pack, as you said, uh, Adam Blow's been recalled. Uh, he obviously. Uh, um, weren't part of the World Cup squad last year. Uh, he, he was part of the World Cup squad, but it, then it, it, it was dropped the year before, I think, um, and then was then just edging his way back in the Kiwis side. The Bromwiches um, are back as well, aren't the they? The Bromwiches are back. Um, they're fantastic, aren't they? Yeah. They're, 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 <laughs> they're big boys, aren't they? So, uh, uh, Jared Warrior Hargreaves, yeah, is J it? Jared Warrior Hargreaves. Yeah. You, you know what? I know our Adrian Jackson... Uh, did an interview with him at the last World Cup. He's majorly into his metal, his metal music in heavy metal. Is he? Yeah, he is. He, don't, don't he just, when you see him, don't, does he not just remind, could you not see him and he's, uh, you know, Iron Maiden t shirt? Yeah. Well, true. You, know, but you yeah. can just imagine him in that sort of mold guy. Yeah. He's a top bloke, by the way. Yeah, he's a, he's a top player, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, but he always roughs it up, doesn't Beast. he? Beast. Yeah, and, and you see, I think him and Chris Hill could have a. Have a little do with each other. What are you saying? Chris see it. doesn't get touchy these days at all. I like Biff anyway. I won't, I won't see it brought back, Dave. But bring back the Biff. Bring back, yeah. Bring bring <laughs> it back. <laughs> but um, I don't mind it. A lot of people don't don't like it and say it's not in the game, not for not good for the game. But I, I love it, me. I think I think it, it gets everyone fired up. It gets the gets the crowd excited. That's one of the only things in rugby league nowadays that gets. The crowd off the the seats, uh, apart from when a try scored. So bring it back. So we've got uh, we've got three internationals coming up in this series over at Hull, uh, Leeds, and Liverpool. Although I think it's Leeds one that's last, isn't it? I'm right there. Yeah, it's Hull, Anfield, and then Ellen Road. Yeah. Um, have you got your tickets yet? Get on the RFL website if you haven't. Yeah, Jaffo. It's it's going to be a, a very good si uh, series. I know. England made it look easy in Denver against the Kiwis, but wow, um, they beat Australia a couple of weeks ago and, and they put in some performance. And uh, I think them having Sean Johnson, it's worth paying 20 quid to see Sean Johnson play. Why have we took the game sort of football grounds, do you think? It's, it's, I think it's added attraction for rugby league fans, personally. Right, Dave, okay. um, especially 
at Anfield, home of Liverpool Football Club, but a lot. Uh, maybe say if you get an extra couple of hundred just general Liverpool fans who go to the game, fantastic. Gets more people involved, gets them seeing an international top top athletes at the top of the game. Um, but I think it's a major major pulling factor for rugby league fans um, for Anfield because they'll be like, wow, if, if they're not into football but they know the the history behind Anfield, what about sitting in the club? Uh, the clop, the the cop, the cop end, and uh, was that, was that a fraudulent slip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I think I think it's a pulling factor, to be honest. What about Ellen Road as well? Because I mean, we've been there before uh, from a, an international point of view. Well, but Ellen Road just uh, obviously it's the last game, so obviously the game might be a, a decider. It could possibly be one all, and then obviously it'd be, that'll be the decider. It might not be, um, but. It's it's a bit of a bigger ground than Headingley. Headingley is not fully right yet, is it? No, no, it's not fully no, fully renovated no. yet. So obviously it might have been there uh, if it were because of the capacity, but because it's not ready, I think they'll take it to Leeds. And Leeds is is kind of in the in the the close proximity for everyone mm-hmm. really, because for all Lancashire people who want to go, it's not too far, so it's not like trekking all the way to Hull. And then for for the people in Hull on the the further side of Yorkshire, it's not too far for them either. So I think it should, the the reason why it's at Ellen Road, it's big capacity and it's it's in that close proximity for everyone. So for those viewers who are potentially joining us from uh, North America, for Canada, who are used to travelling and uh, wouldn't think twice of going to an hour in one direction or the other, us rugby league types in England, we're a little bit more. Oh, we'll just small, shall we say? Yeah. So it's like yeah. a big, a big trip to Hull. Well, particularly be, from where we're filming from. Yeah. Wanted to, 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 to be fair, Dave, going to witness from Wigan for me is a trek. So uh, depends on your time of day, doesn't it? Uh, As well, with the, you, with you the don't want to be going. making that trip to witness at five o'clock. No uh, chance. Uh, I know that we haven't got too much long left of the uh, of the show, but. I just want to have a quick reflection mainly of the European Championships that's also taking place as well uh, and also we, we, we must say uh, the Jamaican team going doing some promotional work over there which um, although it contains I'd say probably 80% players from Super League Championship and League One what a, what a role those guys will have that's going to be an entertaining trip isn't it oh it's, it's going to be fantastic it's good to see like if you, if you put that in Jamaica squad on paper and you make a 17 of that it's, it's, a, it's a decent score isn't it the two Jones Bishops the two jo- and the golden at full back Ashton golden Golding. Full, yeah yeah so um, I saw a tweet from his mum the other day wishing him all the best so yeah. I thought it was really really nice that um, Jamal Coleman in the halves um, Ross Peltier hey, hey Bradford hey. Uh, well, Dave, come on, come on, Dave. Uh, Farrell. Joel Farrell, who's Farrell. just signed for Sheffield. Sheffield from Batley. And his dad used to play at Sheffield as well, so yeah. there's a bit of a family connection going yeah. on there. Um, season. But yeah, it's, it's fantastic, and I, I think if, if the editor James Gordon were here, he'd, he'd have a different argument to, to me and the Dave. But um, yeah, I think it's fantastic, and it, it, because it's. It, you don't. I, I don't like it when people say you've got to be born there or yeah. you've got to you've got to live there all your life. I don't. I don't buy into that. It's about representing your family's heritage. I've got an Irish grandfather. And, yeah. So so if I if I had the, like, if I were good enough and I, and I would select it. Obviously England would, be, would take precedent because obviously I've grew up here. But if Ireland selected me, I'd be honoured to to represent him. I didn't tell you that the uh, the old shot clock was going. That's kind of like it's crept up back. on us, hasn't it? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I I love the average thing, and and he, um, Wales have got a strong squad that, uh, this year. I, I like the story of what came out the other day. Mike Butt, who's, who plays for Swinton, had no no clue that uh, he's, he was uh, even eligible to to play for the Dragons. He was just having a casual uh, chat over text with uh, Rodri Lloyd, who's his club and international te- soon to be international teammate. <laughs> And uh, he said, "Well, my na- my nan's well short. I- I'll play for Wales." And he di- but he said it as a joke. And he didn't act- he didn't actually know the eligibility <laughs> rules. And then he found out that he could represent. Yeah. It. So that's <laughs> so like- nobody's, nobody's in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So you've watched this. I suppose this has been a bit of our international preview, hasn't it? Ahead of the the autumn games. Uh, we'll be back again in a week's time. Uh, remember that you can share, like, comment. Uh, you set the agenda. So you know. So it's not just about me and Drew by all stretch of the imagination just discussing what we want to do regarding rugby we could talk all day about it in fact. Hey, just, to, just a shout out to this 
this person, David, a, a Toronto fan, in it, and obviously, in obviously Canada, has um, sent us the Million Pound Game programme over there. I'm going to have a read of that afterwards. I just, yeah. wrote, I'm always fascinated with programmes. Doesn't have a price on. I was interested in find what out, find out what the price were, but it, yeah, it doesn't. Um, and it's got a Fiji International, Ashton Simpson, Malta International, Jared Samus up front cover in Canada. Who'd have thought it, Ed? Um, Who'd have thought yeah. it? Right, let's see if we can get the so game right. Thanks, thanks to, uh, to the fan in, in Toronto for sending it. Thank you very we much. We appreciate it. Love Rugby League HQ. Let's see if we can also get the game right over here as well. But I'll leave it there. So thank you for joining us. Join us again next week.